Hey guys, today Chris is going to make you fall in love with music again. Welcome to Pedal Therapy, episode 3. Hey guys, welcome to Tormans Guitars and Basses. My name is Chris. And my name is Guillaume. Hope you're all doing great. We are we are back back with yet another episode of... Of, uh, of my pedal, favorite kind of video. <laughs> pedal therapy. The episode where we just turn on things and also the cameras. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> because We yeah. do exactly the same thing as what we would do without cameras. We told this already, but in case you're new to the series, uh, we are just testing out stuff that are exciting for us because they are brand new or... We just in this case, started getting just them. new for Tolman. So yeah. we sort of have the chance to grab them, test them out, fall in love with them, and uh, yep. yeah. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, <Gas>. that's not... <laughs> this is the gas series. If you... Yeah, exactly. So we choose two pedal brands in uh, each of these videos. Yep. And this time we've chosen J-Rocket, who just brought out a couple of weeks, maybe a month ago, yeah, something like that, ish, uh, yeah. the brand new Clockwork. Which is awesome. We'll talk about it a bit. I mean, you've heard it already. It's ridiculous. And the other brand is a brand new brand, at Toman. Yeah. These pedals are not super brand new, but um, Toman started selling them, so we finally had the chance to test them out. The cast leather uh, pedals, which uh, are the Toxic Twins and the Dirty Little Thing. Love the name. <laughs> it, th those are good names. Yeah. Uh, so we'll just, we won't be going through specs, maybe some of them, some, you know, if... Nice features, which are fun, whatnot. yeah. Uh, but this is mostly just like trying pedals in isolation, putting them together, having a little bit of fun, seeing how they work. Um, by the way, before we get into the different sounds, please, please, please put on headphones because today we're running stereo because the clockwork allows for that. It's the stereo pedal, so we'll be running through the Rev D20 and the Palmer Cab with Celestion uh, Cream Back. 75. 75. And the Fender Hot Rod Deluxe with the Harley Benton with V30s. Uh, wow. in it. So please put on headphones because that is, that is the utmost quality of sound that you will get today. It is. I mean, I knew that the clockwork is awesome, uh, but I never tried it until today. Yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, let's start uh. with uh, just some cleans and, and the delay. Before I say anything else, I have to point out the dynamics. It's yep. ridiculous. When he said he's going to play a clean <laughs> delay tone, <laughs> this was one of the overdrives maxed out pretty much. <laughs> it's like yeah. at, what is that, 3 yeah, o'clock. Yeah, yeah. uh, can you give me the cable just for a sec on my bridge pickup? Because a tele bridge pickup is way more direct and crunchier than like a that stress was, pickup. That was like fourth position volume at like eight or nine. Yeah, yeah pretty much almost 10 actually. I, I, I looked the, at second, the second one, yeah, yeah afterwards, the second. Okay. afterwards. And this is the same setting with the bridge pickup of Tally. Okay. 
a detuned telly. <laughs> but you get the point. Uh, it's just so, so... Good. Can I get the tuner? <laughs> it's so dynamic, and that's exactly what uh, not everyone pays attention to when when they're talking about overdrives. Yeah. It's not only about the EQ; it's about uh, the bloom of the note, the dynamics, the compression. Um, for some kind of tones, you will want a lot of compression because that's how it works. That's how you have a lot more sustain. Yeah, that's yeah. how you have even notes for yeah. solos. That's what you want. Well, most of us. Uh, for something like that, but if you're into something that can be clean or pretty much hard rock yeah. just by adjusting your picking, picking yeah. that's magical. And it's hard to play it because it's so different than like a, a more basic uh, whatever crunch uh, pedal, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, what do you want to hear while I'm tuning? Hmm. Do you want to have the delay turned off? Yeah, let's uh, let's let's give the drives a little bit a little bit more room to breathe. Okay, okay. Um, That's unusual for me. So, <laughs> just for reference, the left side is uh, of the uh, toxic, the toxic twins. twins. Yeah, yeah. the one we we're using is loosely based off of a blues breaker uh, type of circuit. The right side is more tube screamery, I'd say. Yeah. Again, modified, like it's not a you know. Yeah, it, uh, that's the ballpark. Like the basics of the yeah. circuitries are like a blues breaker for the left side of the Toxic Twins and a, a green pedal for the right side. Yeah. But uh, we both know both pedals, especially Tube Screamers. You use them a lot. Yeah, yeah. I also own and love them and whatever. Uh, they are in that ballpark, but they do not sound like a Tube Screamer. And that's totally fine because yeah, yeah. we're not talking about clones. We're talking about... A very really specific take on, on, on that one takes. circuit. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So and you'll see even like in between the Toxin Twins and the, the little thing, which is also based on a Tube Screamer circuit, yeah, yeah. like the difference is kind of kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is the Bluesbreaker side, which is my go-to tone. Like that's what we do on this channel as well, yeah. the Warm Player Pantheon, all the time. That's yeah. our base tone as soon as it gets like medium or high gain. And uh, in private as well, when I'm playing at home, oh, I yeah. always use... A pedal of that kind. Sure, what I'm doing, but that's a very enjoyable, very wide tone. It, it does have quite some bass, yeah. all the sparkle, um, not too edgy still. That that would, I mean, I could use that just as my clean to crunch tone. Like yeah. that, that would be it. It's a very MP kind of yeah. tone. I mean, it does simulate or give you that kind of flair that that Marshally Bluesbreaker amp or Bluesbreaker pedal kind of flair. Very soft, even though it's it's on the hard clipping. Mode it, it still sounds very like pretty, yeah. not too hard. If yeah. you guys want more info on that, there's a bunch of dip switches yeah. inside. It's all on the website. Go check out the link in the description. And they do a lot more than they seem like they do, but they do 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 <laughs> they that. They do do do. They do do that. <laughs> so uh, on uh, that, I give you the the green side. The You're, green that's, side. That's give your me the green kind side. of thing. Uh, we have uh, two times green. <laughs> The uh, third little thing is like a super high-end NOS, yeah, like op amp and chip and uh, all the good, all the good and and new old stock yeah. stuff to try and get as close as possible to the, the original OG, yeah. uh, tube screamer. While the right side of the Toxic Twins definitely sounds to me like it was more tailored to boost into the left side. Like it was really made to be used like that, and you have a lot more flexibility with the yeah, low you can end boost the and bass everything. and everything inside. Um, yeah, so um, it's it's. Just go for it, and I'll, I'll just and you, play them and you twist the knobs, you. you know. You do you. <laughs> I'm going I'm, I'm to play a thing that you've never heard on that channel before. Oh.
it's so obvious the honkiness and yeah. the narrower tone of the their little thing, which yeah. is more something that you would imagine from the green pedal. Yeah. And the the right side of the Toxic Twins does have more bass, even though I have to say that I uh, turned on the first bass boost um, little switch inside yeah, yeah, yeah. to uh, make up for that bass loss, what you normally have for with, with the green pedals. Yeah. yeah. Um, honestly. <sighs> Which is know. more your kind of green sound? Well, it depends. Like the one that's on right now, the, the dirty little thing, yeah. is... That, I, I'd make it warmer, that's yeah, why I thought, like, wait. That, that honk, like it kind of fits for that. Uh, in isolation, I love the other, like the right side of the toxic twin. Okay, you want to play the same thing? Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. It's different. Ah. For that, definitely the more traditional, you know, NOS. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Yeah. Uh, they, they're very different takes of the same, of the same thing, but yeah. you, you, I could see myself using both. <laughs> well, it, good thing is that they are meant to be played differently. Uh, I, like, if you give me the cable for a sec, uh, what I love about the Toxic Twins is how well the two sides uh, stack. Work together, Which yeah, is yeah. very important. If you True. pay more for a double, like a dual overdrive, yeah, yeah. I want the two sides to yeah. work really well. It's what? it's a lot of bass, but it's very focused. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. it's still right it has the there. Bite. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 nice about it. Uh, fun fact: you know how the uh, where the name comes from? No, I read that in the manual. Toxic I didn't twins. Read the manual. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Aerosmith. Oh, Steve and Joe. Yeah, and Toxic yeah, Twins. Yeah, yeah right. It, it's meant to bring that kind of uh, nasty rock tone. That's so cool. I didn't think yeah, of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the clockwork, finally. Yes. I'm so excited about this pedal. It's it's really impressive. So it's basically basically based on the original Memory Man by uh, Electro Harmonics, obviously, um, but it's got a little bit more to it. Uh, mainly the tap tempo, the extended control over the modulation of, of the delay stereo out, which is, that was on the Memory Man. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah I think so too. I'm not, I'm not a Memory Man specialist. You guys out there will let me know in the comments. There are many versions but of Memory Man. Yeah, it does a bunch of cool things on top of that, but it's mostly just about the quality of the delay yeah, and like exactly. the repeat. And that's what they paid, as far as I can tell, most yeah. attention to, to get the best original parts and you know best quality parts possible to make an analog delay sound that super pristine. Yeah. I mean, we're not talking about a digital delay, so it shouldn't be like an actual repeat of your tone, yeah. but it's so pretty and clear sounding for an analog delay. It's, it's, uh, it's really impressive. Yeah. Can, you, um, can, can I have just the, because now we're going to pair some J-Rocket stuff. Uh, obviously, you guys are familiar with the Archer. We've been using it on every <laughs> video <laughs> on much. the channel. Uh, I just want that as a little bit of boost yeah. into the, uh, the clockwork. And I'll, okay. I'll, I'll do my best. Uh, uh, delay time and the stuff. edge. Fade out in post. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's one of those pretty, pretty maker pedals. Yeah. Like, just play I played whatever the G you play. chord, but it was way better than my <laughs> usual G chords. 
<laughs> Nothing wrong with a G chord, but it, it also does this. Can I have the cable? That was some really good, really good edge. <laughs> the tone had some edge to it. That was <laughs> so sorry. I'm so sorry. You put like insert insert a meme here, like whichever meme. <laughs> worst really. meme, the worst meme, please. Um, <sighs> two things out of that whole demonstration there. Clockwork, yes, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think yes. But do you think like? It's still just the one delay. And it's kind of expensive for just the one type of okay. delay. Okay? okay. When you compare it to all the new like stuff that like all that's coming out right now, all the delays where you got all these different gotcha. options, all yeah. of these modes. Yeah. Like who do you think like is that just for the YouTube fan? Or, or, <laughs> <laughs> no. No. It's a very good point because it is really expensive. Yeah. And uh, you really, really wanna have that one tone. Yeah. It's you know who this is made for? Those who would go out and look for old deluxe memory mans yeah, okay. and pay a lot of money. They go for crazy and, money. And, yeah. yeah, and just uh, hope that they still work and are not too noisy and this and that because yeah. maintenance uh, is That's a, a good is point. That issue, is a really you know? good point, yeah. And even though those pedals sound absolutely ridiculous, they're not the most reliable pedals, yeah. especially after so many decades. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah so for sure. it's that pedal that you want to gig if you're into that original tone and you sort of don't find a, a new pedal yeah. that does that like 100%, because you can get very close with all the super clever ones, you know, Timeline, you name it, For all sure. the uh, Source Audio stuff yeah, and yeah. Warriors and everything. They're very, very good. And if you're, you're happy with that, it's of course more um, yeah. versatile, yeah. obviously. So uh, then you don't necessarily need something like this. It's not the most versatile one, but it's very versatile for what it is, which is just an analog delay, True. and it does a lot, while okay. it's just an analog delay. That, but, that, yeah. Thank you for answering my, my first question. My I have no idea what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> my second question is, I, I'm gonna start with a comment. Uh, as much as I love Tube Screamers and as much as I use them, I usually don't use them in isolation, because I don't like just a Tube Screamer. Okay, so into a clean amp, that's not... No, okay. uh, I'll usually stack it with something. There'll be like some sort of a gain stage before or some sort of yeah. gain stage after. They, it's, it'll very rarely be just the Tube Screamer. But that dirty little things, okay. that could work. It has, it has that honk. I really like that yeah. because it's honky, but it's still like, as you did with the tone knob and everything, you can keep some of that warmth back in there. And I really, really like that. It doesn't suck out all the bass. That's it, uh, yeah. 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 I really dig it. Uh, my second question was, uh, and also shout out to Chris's YouTube channel, who's by by now, by now the video is probably out. But you've played every single dual overdrive made by man. In <laughs> well, not all every, of history. but like the, like the most hype ones. And uh, I took the Toxic Twins too, and that. Yeah. yeah. Where 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 do you put that? Why who who's that for? What is that? Um, <laughs> it's. Awesome for rock. Yeah, it has way more bass and low end than most overdrive pedals. So okay. it's good if you're not into pedally sounding pedals. You know what I mean? That's really like good. Like an amp yeah. sounding pedal if you use it for for medium gain, high gain. Yeah, and it's um, it's just great for low gain too, as you've heard in the intro. Yeah, you know. Um, I like the low gain. Yeah, it's that pedal that comes closest to one of my favorite pedals of all time, which is pretty hard to get. Yeah, and uh, I've never had that. Before, if you want so. the answer to that question, check out Chris's video on dual <laughs> overdrives. <laughs> Links in the description. Thanks a little bit. No, no, but seriously, no. that's like we have the experience in isolation, and now you guys know exactly how these pedals sound. But there's always that aspect of comparison nowadays because 
I know comments are going to be like, oh yeah, cool, another tube screw. Yeah, who needs Oh them? yeah, cool, a dual <laughs> overdrive that's like cleanish on one side and not so clean on the other. <laughs> I've seen that before. So yeah, okay, but if you do put them side by side, they're all really like they're all really different. Yeah. And they all and especially if you start things. playing them with a band, which is how they should be played. Yeah, playing music with other people. Uh, and you start recording with them, you you face the fact that those mid ranges and the amount of bass end and treble pops out like crazy. Yeah. And uh, there all of a sudden it makes sense to have like 400 different overdrives in you know the Tomlin so warehouse. So you see, <laughs> mom, it does make sense. Chris <laughs> said so. No, you don't need all of them, of course, but there are big differences. And if you're picky, as I am, <laughs> you will you will choose just a handful out of hundreds yeah. that you like. And uh, it's good to have options to find those that you like. But that being said, don't go crazy with comparing stuff. Been there, done that. It's a <laughs> rabbit hole. It's not healthy. <laughs> it's a rabbit hole. Yeah, whatever. You guys let us know what you think about all of these fine pedals. Yeah, that was a good, we are impressed. That was a good episode. Uh, a, I like this, I like yeah. this pedal therapy. Uh, you want to play us out? Yeah, sure. Uh, before I do that, please uh, consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed that. Also, let us know in the comments. Did you like that kind of, hey, let's play pedals? Because <laughs> That's here. what it is. <laughs> and if so, do you want us to do more? With which brand? Let us know. So we just the, ban know. the brands. The bands too. Yeah. Bands and the brands. The, the bands and the brands. All right. You guys take it easy. See you down there in the comment section and in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.